Okay, I'm here with uh, Professor Dame Wendy Hall. Uh, beyond many things, you are a professor of computer science at Southampton University, and you just came down from stage, and I like the uh, part in the discussion you had in terms of saying a single European digital market, uh, you have some issues with that. What is it? Maybe we can show the way forward with best practice in terms of how we can be digital in Europe, but it absolutely must be in the context of the global. So I don't want to sign up to anything that's going to stop me being able to be a global digital citizen. Uh, do you think uh, the European Union is on a good way uh, related to that kind of global, which is obviously the case? Um, I, don't I don't know, to be absolutely honest. Um, the ambition is to... Uh, the ambition is to make Europe work as a cohesive whole digitally and then to expand out, expand that out to the world. Uh, meanwhile, of course, the world moves on and, uh, and the technology moves on and the American companies will move on. I mean, it's not all wonderful in the States. I mean, they have places where you can't get on Wi-Fi and just like we do. And they have the problems with password sign-ins and, and uh, because they're, it's, it's not just about countries, it's about companies. And um, so it all depends on where you buy your services from as to what you get. And uh, so we need, we need global standards for this sort of thing. And that's what I would like Europe to be doing. And I think the argument was that Europe can't do that from strength unless it is united in the digital sense. Um, and, and maybe that's true. Uh, but I absolutely want Europe batting for me as a global citizen and not just so that I can be digital within Europe. So we shouldn't have uh, additional awards just uh, hiding us from, from the others. I, I want to be able to buy services, digital services from American companies, European companies, uh, Hong Kong companies, Indian companies. I, you know, I, I want to be able to get my services from a global digital world. You mentioned the example when you have to log in on your uh, mobile or on your smartwatch again uh, because the terms and conditions change. So this is a different perspective which should be more user, but you also said, okay, user is also the, somehow the wrong word, right? Well, there's two issues there. One is that um, currently it is a mess, whether you live in Europe or America. Um, for example, the, the example I gave was um, uh, I, I'm an Apple user and I buy my music from iTunes. I have it on my iPhone. I thought it was mine to play when I liked. I'm driving along and I get a message to sign into iTunes. Thought, Why do I need to sign into iTunes? Why does it need my password? It wouldn't let me play the music till I'd signed into iTunes. Now, I assume there's something in the terms and conditions that says I don't actually own that music. Right? It's, it is owned by Apple and I, I don't know, rent it while I have the iPhone. And of course these are the issues, but if I want to move services, can I take that music with me? It's the same as if you, um, you have an uh, online banking. You know, you can take your money, but can you take all that information, the data with you to the next bank? I mean, these are the huge issues we've got to sort out. And in that sense, I am a consumer. But what I also said on the panel is that in this world, we are not just consumers, we generate data. If you think about how YouTube started and Facebook and, and even Google and Twitter and Instagram, it, it's, it, it all grows because of the content we put onto it. Um, so, and we are generated data. Our health records, our, uh, our banking records, they're all, it's all because of things that we do and data that's generated about us, by us. And, and, and so it's really important that we're not just thought of as consumers, that we are, also, we are part of the social machine that is this, this ecosystem we call the internet. Uh, it, it, this brings us back to the question, okay, who owns, owns my data, uh, which are corporations right now who compete about these data and earn money with that. So um, is there one single idea to how to solve that? Well, the idea I subscribe to, which many uh, of, the, of the, the sort of future thinkers sign up to, is that will come a tipping point in the future where we will move to a world where we, we own the data that is about us, that we generate that is about us. And then we uh, we have uh, agents or some third party, trusted third party that um, lets other services use that data for whatever purpose. Um, and I generally subscribe to that. There's a lot of people around the world that are building those those types of systems but it will take a huge shift to make that happen because at the moment people just throw their data out there and really don't think about where it's going 
whose server it's landing on, who's doing what with it. Um, and it's not until this, the, gener the digital generation is so young really, I don't just mean that it's all young people, I mean we've only been truly digital or, or even partly digital for 10 years really, in terms of being able to move data around. And um, you know, in another 10 years, 20 years, when we're all worrying about our well, who we're going to leave that data to and uh, you know where our digital assets are that we're going to start worrying about what did I do with that piece of data. You're addressing the right topics. Uh, Ms Hall, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.